Ok, ben Ezra Tachem. So now we pass Ur. We are continuing until the end of the Perek, according to the Gaumi Vilna, and then we'll go back and learn all this portion according to the to the Malbim, since it's all, if you will, uh, a process, an intertwined process, an explanation uh, that carries on until the end of the Perek, at least according to the Gaumi Vilna, for sure. So we're in Pasuk Yud Aleph. Perek Dalet, Pasuk Yud Aleph. No fet titofna. Siftotaich, your 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 lips are dripping drops of sweetness. Kala, my kala, devash ve halav tahat leshonech. There is honey and milk under your tongue. Ve reach salmotaich ke reach levanon, and the smell of your dresses is like the smell of Lebanon. We're going to go pasuk pasuk. So in this pasuk, the gaumi in the, the gaumi vilna is uh, is starting to identify the layers of Torah that have that have been uh, uh, mastered and controlled by Shlomo Amelech, Kiviyahol, yeah. Or the the uh, or the neshama, right? Depending on how we, uh, you know how we are seeing this the, the dual communication here. And he says the following: Yes, two pirushim on nofet tiftof. Now he said the sweetness represents the sodot Torah, the secrets of the Torah. In other words, the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah perspective of the Torah is the real taste of sweetness. Of the Torah, a person wants to connect, wants to the, the taste of the Torah. There's many flavors to it. The one, the one that that is actually sweet, is the Sodot Torah, and this is what basically the Hatan likes from the Kala. That's from coming from her lips. She, he loves her lips because they are sweet. Why are the lips of the Kala sweet? Because of the Limuda Kabbalah. That's what the Gaon says. Devash is the Remazim, is the Remez of the Torah. It's what you, what the Torah insinuates, okay? This is what you need. It's it's almost a a, 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 a bridge between the sword and the pshat. It's the remez, and it's compared to the devash, to the to the uh, to the honey, because the remez also is sweet. When you're able to understand uh, hints from the Torah, it's very satisfying. When you're, you, it shows that there is a complicity and an intimacy between you and the Torah. This is the remazim, so it's sweet like the honey. The halav is the drash, the drashot. The drashot is what you learn from the Torah based on pesukim and comparatives of different pesukim. There are rules in the drashot, right? Part of the drashot are also the midrash, right? And this is like the halav. What's the purpose of the halav? Says the Gaon Mibilna, the halav is thick. The halav, the milk is thick, right? It's made, it's made of fat and it expands, right? It's here to expand the, 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 the body, the health, right, of a person. It gives, it gives growth to the baby. The same thing, it gives growth to the spiritual and intellectual grasp of the Torah of an individual. That's the drashot. The drashot allows you to grow and to learn more halachot and to understand more 
from the Torah. That's the halab. And this sits tahat leshonech under your tongue. The reach salmotayich and the smell of your dresses. Kereach Lebanon is like the smell of Lebanon. He, say, he says, this is the pshat. This is the pshat. This is the halachot, dvarim pshutim. It smells good. It's a beautiful smell, but it's something that you're going to have a hard time identifying. You know it smells good, but to go and find out what the smell is made of and it's, it's, uh, it's mixed, that's a little bit more complex. So you are, you are exhibiting, you are, uh, uh, you are bringing out this smell, you are sharing the smell, the person will smell it and it's attracting, but it, it's hard to identify exactly where, what, the, what is the nature of the smell. That's the basic shot that the gun wants to say. So he tell, the gun comes and tells us that depending on what you learn from the Torah, you will expect different uh, uh, interactions. If you're learning the pshat, then it's a smell. It's something very comforting. It's something that smells good. It's something that's uplifting, but you don't actually taste it, right? You don't actually absorb it. It's, it's like almost a teaser. Ah, you have the drashot. Then the drashot are here. It's like the halav tahat leshoner. The drashot is a tool to be able to expand on that smell and be able to understand it even more. And it's already making you bigger. It's making you smarter. It's making you more rich in wisdom of the Torah. That's the, the, the halal. The devash, ah, the devash, the devash is already the remazim. It's already sweet like the honey, right? It's, it gives you that taste already. It's in your mouth. Essentially, part of your essence is the lips, the sweetness of your lips. So we go from the dress to what's under the tongue, to the taste in the mouth of the honey, to the actual sweetness of, this, of, of, of the lips, which is, which is the soul. If you will, so we go from something that's part of you all the way to, to something that is exterior, right? That is uh, uh, like a lebouche, like a clothes, right? It's, it doesn't say anything about you, but it's part of you, you have to wear it, yeah? The other pshat says the, 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 the Gaon, he says that kala refers again to the soul, to the same pardes, but he says that it, the soul is in all the peret, in the in pshat, remesh, and rash. You find soul in the pshat, you find soul in the remesh, and you find soul in the drash. He says, How? How? One second. He says, Nopeti Tofna Sifto Tair Kala. He says, This is the sword. This is the sword. And what is this sword? How is it that your lips are so sweet? It's because you will have sweetness. You're so sweet that you bring the halal, Tahad Leshoner. You bring the Devash in your mouth, you, and you, you, you put on you yourself a beautiful cloth. So he wants to say that the 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 he says it's inside your mouth, right? Under your tongue, it's something you keep under your tongue. The, 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 the drash and the remez, I think you keep close to you. You don't just share it with anybody. However, the reach, salmotaich, the pshat, is something you wear outside. It's something you share with everybody. You let everybody see. So you will, you will be known. You will be known for your halachot. You will be known for your pshat. But your drash and your remez, you will share it under your, it's, you keep it under your tongue to share it only with relevant people. The sod is who you kiss. The sweetness of the sword, of the secret of the Torah, that you need a proximity of a Isha Kinyin Mineshikot Pihu Kitovim Dodechamiyayim. 
It's only once you kiss someone on the mouth that you have that you have that proximity that you can share that sweetness of the solo. Now, going back to uh, to Andy, what, what you're saying, yeah. You, you, there is two ways of, of understanding the impact of the soul. One impact is that it's, it's, it's categorized in four categories. The Torah is categorized in four categories of the Torah. And when you learn soul, you don't learn pshat. When you learn pshat, you don't learn soul, right? But then there is something else. There is, there is in every halacha, in every halacha, you have, there is a dimension of soul to it. In every drash, there is a dimension of sod to it, right? Like, for example, we learned the Haggadah of Pesach, right? The, we know what the Pshat is, right? We read it, but we stuck out from those gematriot, so many sodot of the 3,280 malachim and every name and what it represents, right? So there is a pshat to it. There is definitely a, definitely a pshat to it. Rabbi Eliezer Ayahomer, well, Rabbi Eliezer used to say, this is pshat, pshat. But within that pshat, you have a song. Got it? Good. So this is, this is if you will, the introduction of the impact the different layers of the Torah have on, an, on, on, on a person, on the neshama, on the nefesh, right? So it, will, it, it has to be an identity you share with everyone from the, your knowledge of halacha of pshat. So on the outside, you have to be seen as what? As pshat, halacha, things, peshutim, things, yeah. But from within, you, you can share the, the, the richness and the sweetness of the, of the milk the, the, and of the honey and, and, and definitely depending on how close you are to a person all the way to the soul. Right? The same way you don't kiss anyone on the mouth, you're not going to start sharing with everybody's soul. It's a, it's an inter, it's a, it's a level of intimacy and, and relationship that you build in order to reveal so much. The same way you're not going to share your secrets with anyone. Good. And he continues. And he says, Gana Naul. Now we pasuk you bet. Gana Naul Ahuti Kala. My my uh girl, it you Gana Naul, you are a locked, a locked garden. My bride, my my sister, right? My beloved one. Gal Naul. You are a fountain that is locked. Ma'ayan Hatum, a sealed spring. Uh, right? A spring of water. Hatum that is completely sealed. Now again, the Gaomi Vilna says Shlomo Amelech is referring. To the Torah. And now he's, so we went from all the Midot to the Ma'alot of the Torah, to the impact the Torah has on the individual, that's Pasuk Yudalev, and now he's diving into the different types of layers of the Torah. We have Torah Shebe'al and Torah Shebe'al Pe. Here we have three three uh, comparison. We have a comparison to the gun, to the garden. We have a comparison to the gal, to the fountain. And we have a comparison to the spring, right? And all of them have a dimension that is closed. Gan na'ul, ahotikala. Gal na'ul, right? It's the, the first two are locked. And the third, the ma'ayan, the spring, hatum, is, uh, is sealed up. So says the Garan, this is referring to Torah Shebirtav. Torah Shebirtav, we have Torah Nevi'im and Ketuvim. Right? And he says, Gan Naul represents the garden, represents the Torah. To, uh, the, the Torah. Torah. Gal, the, the, the fountain, represents the Nevi'im. 
Mayan, the spring, represents the Ketuvim. So the Torah itself, the Gan, which is spread, which is broad, the Gan, which represents the Torah, is Naul. If you think that it's something you can just, it's, it, that you, you can just walk in, Mapitom. It's something that is locked. It's something that is protected. The Nevi'im also, but the Nevi'im, it's already, a, it's, already it's, it's a fountain. It's a fountain. It's something that you can go and actually, if you unlock, you can drink from, right? But the fountain comes, brings out a little bit of water, right? Or the fountain, you have to go and you have to, you have to go and bring out the water. That's the Nevi'im. That's, so the Nevi'im, when you approach and you learn from the Nevi'im, you have to dive into, into that, that, their well and bring out their wisdom. The Torah is the gun. It's a gun. You have, to, you have to walk around. You have to wander. You have to go and find the trees that bring the fruit. And you have to look. It's big. Nevi'im, very pinpointed. There's a well. You have to dive into the well, bring out the water, and then you can drink from it. The Ketuvim, the Mayan, it's a spring, and it's Hatum, and it's sealed. All you have to do, if, if you can unseal it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot, a lot, a lot of water coming out to you. It's, it's, it's an ab abundance of knowledge if you're able to reveal it. That's the Ketuvim. Now he says, he says what, what Shlomo Melech wants to tell us is the Gan Naul is referring really to the Sod. Sodot Torah. The Sodot Torah, they're very, very locked and very hard to grasp, to understand, to connect, to, to master. That's, that's the Gan Naul. Inside of the Sodota Torah, inside of it, you have a Ma'ayan. So, so you have, you have a, you, uh, before the Ma'ayan, you have the, the Gal. You have that, that, uh, that spring. Not that spring, Mechila. That, uh, how do you call it? No, we said we have the, we have the, the I just forgot the word. The well? The well, the well, the well, the well. Okay, you have, and he says, but it's inside the gun, right? So it says it's layers of Sodo Tatora. You have the sword, which is the gun, and that's, that's locked. Even if you go inside, you're going to find that you're going to have to go and look for the well, and you're going to have to unlock that also. And even if you find this, there's so much the well can give you. You want to go to the spring. You want to go to the source where the water comes out, right? And that's, that's sealed up completely. So you have, you're going to have to reveal that also. It says these are the layers in the Sodot Torah. So if you, you can have a gun where you can, you can find trees and eat from, but the more you dive into it, you'll find a source of water. And if you're smart enough, you will find the spring where all the water comes from and it comes to you. He says, this is the dimension and the power of the sod. The sod can give you a source of water, a source of life, a source of water that's so overwhelming, that's so enriching and so refreshing that you, know, you don't need anything else anymore. And that's what gives life to everything. That's the source of the well, that's, got, that's the water going down on in, you know, and, and, and irrigating the entire gun. That also, Shlomo HaMelech was able to penetrate and connect to. Shlomo HaMelech continues and says like this. Shelachayir pardes rimonim. Your, your fields, the gown says, your fields 
a pardes rimonim are like a, like an a, 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 an orchid, right? Of of pomegranates. It's like a, a sade pardes, like a like a field of a, a filled with the, with the pomegranates. Imperimegadim with all types of luscious foods, fruits, kefarim imneradim with a lot of henna, right? And now the smell. Nerd, and we continue. Nerd, Yudalet, the Nard, the Charmon, and the Saffron, Cane, Fragment of Reed, the Kinamon, Cinnamon, Imkol Atzelevona, with all the, the woods, with all the, the woods of, that are aromatic, right? Full of smell. Mov Aholot, you have the Mir, you have the Aloe Vera, Imrashe Besamim, all are. Uh, the choices are all the, the best perfumes. Ma'ayan ganim, you are a garden of spring. Be'er ma'im ha'im, a well with fresh water that brings life in Oslim in Lebanon, that come down, right? That flow down from Lebanon. And finally, finally, the, the prayer, the prayer, Uri Tzafon, wake up, the north, Ubo Iteman, and come from the south, Afi Hirani, blow upon my garden the uh, wind, Izelube Samav, and the the smell of the perfume will spread. Yavododi, and why all this? Yavododi lerano for my beloved one to come to his garden. Veyochal peri megarav and enjoy the fruits. His uh, his uh, it's a uh, luscious fruits, right? It's fruits from the garden. The reason why I read all these pesukim is because we will find that there is an amazing, an amazing uh, message according to the Gaon, to the Gaon Mivina that we almost apply every single day and, and watch. So now we are going, going back to Pasuk Yud Gimel. He says, now we uh, shall, from now on until the end it's we went from Torah Shebiktav to Torah Shebealpe. Now we're diving into Torah Shebealpe. So he says, Shelahaiyh, your sadot, your fields, which are Shelahaiyh, which are the Torah Shebealpe, Pardes Rimonim. He says, Pardes Rimonim is referring to the Mishnayot. He says, a pardes, a field of fruit, is very meticulously organized. Everything there has a reason. Everything there is calculated. The pardes rimonim, the field of the rimonim, there's not, uh, it's not balagan. You cannot have it mis, uh, misorganized or you cannot let any type of, 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 uh, of uh, trees grow. It's exact, very, very meticulous. Mishnayot, every word has its purpose. Every single letter of the Mishnayot has a meaning. It's not just let's read Mishnah and whatever I understand, I understand. No, 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 no. My focus when it comes to Mishnayot is extremely important. And my awareness of the combination of the letters, of the words, of the sequence of the words is extremely specific, yes. One question, just uh, to know or to understand why we are studying now Shira Shirim. This is like uh, the deepest level, or this is there is much more deepness in every world and also gematria and different type of things. Yeah, but I, but I, that there's much more. This ah, is, okay. This is what, what this is for 28,000 feet. 
According, what we're learning right now, yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, not, maybe not 38,000 feet, but we're, we're, we're probably in 30,000 okay. feet. But there's so still- there's much deeper and uh, deeper on it. Yes. Yes. Wow. We touch here the remes, we touch here the drash, we touch a little bit of the salt. Very little of the salt we're touching. Very little of the salt. Wow. Okay. So it's a book for life. You can study the- Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. We give what we can, what our intellectual no. mind can grasp in such a short time. Yeah. We're and how to. much time we, we invest. Yeah. So, again, right? It's made of what? Of fields of, of pomegranates, very organized. This is Mishnayot. Right? And it has luscious fruits. He says the perot, they're, they're, they're big perot, they're fat. He says, this is the Gemara. The fruits, they grow and they have different spirals of flavors. He says, this is the Gemara. The Gemara has a lot of back and forth, a lot of knowledge, a lot of tangents when you learn. It spreads, it spreads the, 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 the intense words of the Mishnah and expands it in many, many different directions. That's Peri Megadim. He says, Kfarim have halachot shebagmara. He says, it's the halachot you learn from the Gemara. Im Neradim with the nerd, right? The nerd, which is uh, the, 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 so the henna represents the halacha you learn from the Gemara. Okay, the, the, the henna, what do you do with it? It has a smell, but you tattoo with it, right? You tattoo with the henna. So you, you, you create, uh, you embrace um, clear definition of, of alachot, right? That become, that now have a, a tzura that has an image. And has a, it has a structure to it. When you look at the henna, the, when you tattoo a henna, the tattoo stays there, right? Now, depending on how deep it goes, it will stay longer. Yeah? This is the alachot. The halachot are very, very clear cut. Now you give, you have an image, you have a structure of what you're learning. The, the, the nerd, the nard, is the agadot, all the agadot. All the agadot you learn from, uh, agadot you learn from the gemarot or from the midrashim. And it's like besamim, it gives a nice flavor to the agada, the agada. Gives you a nice uh, sense to the to what you're learning. It puts things in perspective. It touches your emotion. It stimulates you, like the smell stimulates you. Nerd vecharkom, right? Ne ne the nerd and the saffron. Hem tkufot de gematriot. He says this is the nerd is the the tkufot to understand the periods of time in nature, right? Like uh, the mazalot, we know the, the, the different uh, periods of the time. The charkom, the saffron, represents all the sodot of the gematriot. Kane vikim namon. Kane is the fragment of the reed, is where you find the language the, of the shedim, the angels talking. The kinamon, the cinnamon, is the secret to learn the, the communication of the angels, the rofot, the malachi asharet, the communication of the dekalim, of the, the trees talking. Im kol atse levona, atse levona, is the Torah and the Sofrim. The Dikduk, it's what you, 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 you can identify in the, 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 in the rules of the Hebrew of the Torah and what comes out of it. In the, it, the grammar of it, in the orthograph way of writing things. 
That's in call at Selevona. Now we have already persecuted it, right? Mayan in call at Selevona. Now he says, Mayan Ganim Be'er Mayim Hayrin of Zimim Lebanon. It's all three of them. It's really representing the water, the water, the water, the refreshing impact the Torah has on a person. Coming, whether the Torah is a ma'ayan, is a well, and it, or it comes, it's, it's like a river coming down of a mountain. He says, if you count, if you count, we find 13 attributes. So, 13 attributes. And, he, okay, so like, Shelachayich pardes rimonim, im perim egadim, kefarim, im neradim, nerd vecharkom vekinamon, kane vekinamon, matze levona, mor vaaholot, im kol rache besamin. Mayan ganim be'er ma'im hayim is one. Thirteen. Okay, now if, if you look at, it's really 13, that are 15, because if you, if, if Mayan Ganim, Be'er Mayim Haim, Benozim in Nevalon, it's three of them, right? That are actually one, says the Gabon. The Gabon. So you have 13 that are really 15. Okay, he says right here, Shlomo Amelech is telling us the power the, the Yud Gimel Midot have Yud Gimel Midot Arachamim that we say almost every morning, Hashem Hashem Kel Rachum Vehanun, right? Each one, when you say a word, you tap in a potential of the Torah that you bring upon yourself from those 13 attributes that we just spoke about of the Torah. From the Torah Shebe Alpe, okay? From the Mishnah to the Gemara, to the Halacha, to the Agada. To the to the to the take forth gematriot the secret of understanding the language of the malachim the secret of understanding the language of the trees the understanding the duke torah the duke sofrim the understanding the tagim the the maase merkava all of them are channels that you tap into and you bring upon yourself that wisdom in order to understand that aspect of the Torah. Says the Gaon Mivina, when do you tap into that power? When do you plug into that potential? When you say, you give me the Hashem, 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 Kel, Rachum, Vehanun, Erech, Apayim, right? You're not just begging for mercy. You're begging for mercy through the download of that wisdom in order to understand him better, in order to connect to him better. That's what it means when we scream, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rahum Vehanun on Yom Kippur, or during, during uh, uh, the, the Aseret Yemet Teshuvah, when we do Slichot. It's not just Hashem, come, please forgive me. It's not just a Pasuk. We tell Hashem, Hashem, Please let me tap into your ken, ne rahum, vehanun, and all this is please give me more chokhmah to learn your Mishnah, to learn your Gemara, to learn Agadot, to learn your Drashot, to learn your Digduke Alacha, Digduke Sofrima, Semer Kava, Tagim, Otiot, Kufa, the Gematriot. And we're basically telling Akadosh Baruch through that, through that, through that knowledge. You reveal different midot of yours. Kel, Rahum, Hanun, Erech, Apaim, Rab Chesed. Now, it's 13 that are really 15, we said, right? When you count the 13 attributes of Rahamim, we say Hashem, Hashem, Kel, Rahum, Vehanun. We start 
we start the, the, the counting with Kel. He says, but if you count Hashem, Hashem, you have two more, you have 15. And this is Beka Hashem Tzurolamin. Hashem brings the world from the Yetzirah to the Asiya, consolidates the world in a physical dimension with his name Yudke, Beka. Yudke, Yudke Gematria 15. This is how you tap in, you break down the potential from Yetzirah and can consolidate it and crystallize it in the Olam Asiya, in the world of physicality and practicality. This is what Shalom Melech is re re referring in what he's telling us right now. He's saying with all this wisdom, with all those midot, with all, all these attributes that we've been talking to in this perek, it's in order to be able to then tap into those different channels, those 15 different channels that we can download information from just in order to benefit from the midah, from the proper midah, from the proper attribute of Hashem through that pipeline of knowledge in the Torah Shebe Alpe. Rob, would you say that the, the tefillah, if you understand it properly and you're able to internalize it and, and you know, execute on the tefillah properly, it really is meant to cover all of the beracha that's good for you from Hashem? Absolutely. 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 Everything. You don't need to say an extra letter. Not one extra letter. If you understand what you're saying and you don't know, you know what you're tapping into, you, have, you know, the, the, one of the most frustrating moments I have, the, and it drives me crazy every single time from, you know, when we don't say Tahanun, Yeshem, everybody, Yeshem, Yeshem. <laughs> yeah, we jump to Yeshem Kaddish. Yeah, we just say three minutes. <coughs> Haram, you don't understand. What is Yeshem? You just lost the opportunity to download so much. Now, yes, for sure, it's Mitoch Simha. It's Mitoch Simha is because there's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful day. We have a tremendous Simha. What should be? The the, the 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 reaction the outlook of it okay on one end ah, what can i do i'm losing from the yud gimel midot arahamim that i i would love to say but i'm so happy that the power of the simha of the mitzvah can do the same the problem is that we're not happy for the simha of the mitzvah we're happy that we're not, we're saving three minutes from, 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 from uh, in shul. So when it's, 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 it's so wrong, it's so wrong, it's so wrong. And he goes, uh, the Garon goes to explain to you, and we have to go through that. We have to go through that. Okay, so we, we ju ju just enumerated 13, 13 uh, different senses, right? that are compared to the, to the 13 different uh, layers of the Torah, Kedusha, and to the 13 attributes of Kel Rahum Vehanun, which are really 15, right? And he says, Kel Bala Rahamim, Rahum Merahem, Merahem, Kel Rahum, Hashem Merahem, he has mercy upon us, Be'et Tzara, when there's, when there's pain, when we're in, when we're sad, when we're we feel bad, Hashem comes and has mercy upon us. A person needs rahamim from Hakadosh Baruch because he's sad. He has to focus in the word rahum. Hanun. He does it out of grace when we do things for Hakadosh Baruch to gain more favor in his eyes. Hashem, I'm doing this to find hand in your eyes. I'm doing this to find hand in your eyes. In your, yeah? So please, bishut zeh, bishut that, that, that effort, that's hanun. And even though you don't need to do it, you don't need to do it for me, but I'm, go, I'm, I'm doing the extra mile to look, to, to, uh, to find grace in your eyes. Because even though you don't have to do it, please. 
Hanun. Erech Hapayim. You do this not only for the Reshaim, but for the Tzadikim. For both Erech Hapayim. Verab Chesed. Big Chesed. Abundance of Chesed. Emet, we understand. Notzer Chesed. You, and you know what? If you cannot find the Chesed, you create it. How do you create Chesed? Zechut Avot. This is the sword also, says the Gaon, that a person, this is the, 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 the potential a person can create if you respect Zechut Avot. If you honor your grandparents, their values, at times where Hashem should not, cannot find Hesed to save you, well, he will create it the same way you tapped into your ancestors, Hashem will find and create it through the mitzvot of your ancestors for you. La alafim. And you know what? If the higher you go in the, into your zechut avot, the higher you respect your ancestors in generations, then the more he's going to go also. La alafim, a thousand generations. No se avon. He's a... He 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 he, uh, he overrules the uh, the avonot that the, the we do that we do the kaas the one we do when we're we when we're aware the avonot that we have and the one we do we not not we don't pay attention benake benake and he cleans he cleans he forgets he cleans he cleans and he says if you add Hashem Hashem now you have 13 plus 3 is 15. The first Hashem is before a person sins. So Hashem, you are great before the sin. And you are great after the sin. Before the sin, you are great. Why? Because you know that there's a sin that's going to come and you don't do anything about it. You let the sin happen. And you are great after the sin. Because even though you knew that there was a sin coming in, the sin actually came, you opened for the, for, for, for the teshuvah. That's Hashem, Hashem. Hashem, you're great before the sin, knowing there's a sin that comes and you don't intervene. And you're great after the sin, accepting that the sin happened and accepting the teshuvah. Incredible. <laughs> and he says, this is also aligned with the 12 tribes of Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu is 13. Avraham Yitzhak is 15. Right? So you have Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the 12 tribes is 15. He says, again, we find this parallelism of 15, right? Isn't in the core essence of the Avot HaKedoshi. He says, if you look at all the different uh, materials that were used in the Mishkan, you will find also that there's 12 of them. Add the Avne Shoham, 13. Avne Miluim, 14. And the Shemen that was used, the Shemen Taho, right? The oil that were used for the Abu Dhabi Mikdash, 15. Right? So there is a. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Yes. No, the 15 Vav in, on uh, after Shema, you, you told There's us. Also 15 Vavim in the Shema, Nachon, Nachon. So, and he says, so uh, th those three attributes, he says, Mayan Gadim is a Chokhmah. Be'er Mayim Hayim is, is Bina. Benozim in Lebanon is the Da'at. Chokhmah Bina va Da'at, right? So the Mayan, the one that the, the overwhel overwhelming of information, Mayan Ganim, is Chokhmah. Be'er is structure, right? It takes the water and categorizes it in locations. That's the well, right? It's the Bina. Then Ozlim in Lebanon, and it goes out, right? From the Lebanon to, uh, to irrigate is the Da'at. Good? And with all this, with all this, now Shlomo Melech makes makes a tefillah. Oh, it's a phone. He says, "Wake up, 
wake up the north. Uboi teman and come from the south. Afihirani, right? Blow wind upon my 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 field upon my my garden. Izelube samav and let the smell of the garden spread. Yavodo dilerano, my beloved one will come to his gun, which is his essentially. Veyochal and he will eat perimigadav. He will eat from his luscious fruits. So he says, we know. All the berachot, all the togot come from the north. Or it's a phone. So he says, we need to wake, awake in our tefillot. We need to awake the north. We need to awake the source of all the berachot. It's, a, it's an avoda. Or it's a phone. If you don't create the, the, the generating of the berachot, it will not come. It will not come. You need, when you pray, says, says the Gaumi Vina, he says, you have, to, you have to trigger the beracha to awake itself. He it says, it's a pasuk in Tehilim. All the good, all the good that you received from the north. Teman, the south, the Hesed. It says the Hesed is always there. The, what's important is to make sure you don't lose it. Ubo iteman, come, keep on coming. Don't stop coming. And he says, Afihirani, bring this beracha, bring that chesed, and blow upon my field, blow, blow upon my actions. In order to accept his zelube samav and, 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 and allowed through by blowing that that smell, that all that benefit from, the, the, from my gun spreads out. Why? Yavod Dodi Lerano, so that my Dodi, so I Kadosh Bauchu, right, can come to the gun, to his gun, I, essentially, because my gun ends up becoming his gun through everything I'm doing. Veochal Peri Megadav, and he will eat from the fruits, and he will benefit from all my actions. Says, says the Gami, this is, this is the ultimate tefillah that we make to Akadosh Bauchu. We pray Akadosh, to Akadosh Bauchu. Uh, through the, the Kirvata Torah, through the understanding of the Torah, through understanding of the different layers of the Torah, that we embrace the Torah and ask him to come and benefit from our, our, our actions so that we can st still stay connected and still be one. So according to the Gaon, the, 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 the level of Shlomo HaMelech the intimacy that Shlomo Amalek had with Akadosh Baruch Hu, his wisdom be, was all because of he was because of his mastering of the Torah and the different layers of the Torah, and that's how he was able to tell Yavododile Ranove Yochal Peri Gadav. Akadosh Baruch Hu comes and eats from your fruits, eats from your own Torah, eats from your own efforts, eats with you. This is the power of the Torah. That's how, according to the Gaon Mivina, Shlomo HaMelech concludes the fifth Perek. After the attribution of all those layers, a tefillah. I've done all this, but now I'm praying for you to accept it, to continue to have hesed from me, on me. And what type of hesed? To come and enjoy what I'm doing. This is the biggest hesed that Kadosh Baruch can give to a person to show his attention on what he's doing and appreciate it. This Beautiful. is according to the Gaudi Wow. 
It gives a different dimension to the Yud Gimel Midot Arachamim that we have to say now. 100%. Beautiful. Wow. So, it's very technical. Oh. It's very technical, but it's... Uh... Oh, I love it. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. With this, we, 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 we're able to, uh, to say Mazal Tov, that we finished the fourth Perek according to the Gaon Mivilna. Oh, we'll go back to, uh, to the Malvim and uh, run with it. Amen. Thank you, Rav. Thank you, Rav. Thank you, Rav. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.